Okay, good morning. So I am in a little bit of a rush because I have come up after high winds and rain. Unseasonally so really, but we were having quite high gusts and uh, we've got a little bit of a disaster area here because this roof blew off. Now, that's troubling. There's the crown board there. I've not even got... Um, I haven't got my gloves on because, as you can see, they have clustered for that. Will have been very bad for their brood. They, uh, so, in the winter, that kind of thing is a total nightmare. Uh, in the summer, well, our nighttime temperatures won't have been, oh, hello, won't have been too bad. Um, so it won't have killed the bees, but it may very well have made them struggle to keep the brood warm enough, so that will have chilled their brood. Fortunately, it happened on, on a small one there. Um, but yeah, so you'll see, I do normally put a brick or lash down with a, with a strap. Um, oh my goodness, I hadn't even noticed it. I just assumed that that was wreckage. That whole lot has just fallen over, and so some of those are upside down. Um, so of these two, this one is bait, that is half of the really good swarm. So you can see they're clustered in there, but looking pretty still and sad. So I'm going to have to get them upright um, and, uh, and try and repair that. That's how strong the winds were, that this one, with a little bit less weight because it's only got the one hive on, which was half of the big swarm, the other half I've split off now. Um, you know they're on their they're on their on their bum so they've been like that all night at least um so yeah gloves on and uh, we're going to get sorting that out straight away so let's just do this so yeah i do have a habit of coming out after any high winds and checking because you do the best you can and they had a brick on but you just you know none of the other uh, stands fell over it's bad luck you know i'm, I'm you might look at me and go Ooh, shake your head and everything but I'm I'm comfortable that this is just <clears throat> misfortune really so uh, all right we'll get that all right I'm holding on to you while I'm we'll get that there like that okay so let me just the comb is aligned this way what I don't want to be doing is getting it falling against each other. So I'm going to turn it this way up. Now, fortunately, it looks like it fell that way. So we don't want to squash bees between the combs. It's a lovely number of bees in there. So. All right. So as I said with the other one, if that had happened in the winter, that would have been a nightmare because the winter temperatures would have likely killed bees as well as um, as well as brood. Now, um, yeah, just looking at my notes last week, they were queen right, so they had two frames with eggs on. They're probably done. They. Um, I'd be surprised. I think the nighttime temperature was about 12 degrees. Maybe the bees were able to cluster on that and keep them warm. It is possible. Angry bee. Look at this. I've not had, had an opportunity to get the smoke out or anything. And she's properly bombarding me. Yeah, they're not very happy about it. Um, so I won't get the lid off and look at these today. There's, there's no other remedial action to do. If I come in next week and there's brood, then that's good. The only the only sort of remaining question about where they're at is, um, well, well, is uh, whether the queen survived that. You know, she may have been crushed in the in the movement there, but looking at the way that they rolled, probably not. They probably rolled the safest way there is. So, um, yeah. Okay. All right. This is the most windswept of my apiaries, which is a part of why I'm up here first this morning. Um, the other part is because we've had two days of bad weather, that's put me back on the clock a little bit. So I've mentioned it in other videos, but 
I'll really try and sort of lay it down why we inspect uh, every eight days uh, throughout the season. So it is about swarm prevention. It is about preventing my own bees from swarming off and just disappearing off to the horizon. Um, so what you're looking to catch them doing is bringing on a queen egg. Ooh. Ooh. We'll just pause that for a minute. Here is a stack of shame, the bait hives. That looks positive. We'll have a little look in there right now. Maybe we've had another little swarm sometime since last week. So if you remember from the mega swarm, this is one of the ones that attract that. It's still got the bur comb on there. Um, bur comb, I've been watching too many American ones. In, in Britain, we call this brace comb, but, uh, or at least I do. Maybe I'm not necessarily. Oh, that's a swarm. Oh, well, that, that cheers me up a little bit this morning. That's lovely. Look at the state of that. Right. Oh, oh, and they've been in there a, a few days. I'm going to have to tidy that up, but that can wait. <laughs> that can wait for another day when I've got less, less critical jobs to do. They're going to just do what they do. They'll look after themselves. <laughs> okay, well, I'm pleased with that then. All I'll do, I'll just move this. So this is all just spare equipment here that at some point needs to be taken away and cleaned and painted for the most part. Uh, I'll just up to, well, I'll know. That's fantastic news though, that's really good. So this next section, uh, the wind got just too bad. It was just terrible. And uh, so I'm just gonna have to mute myself here and just talk to you from home uh, while I'm editing the video up together. Because what I'm gonna explain is I'm just gonna catch up with where I was getting to about why I'm so desperate to get in and inspect these now. So it's this, 16 days it takes for a queen to go from being laid as an egg to hatching out. Uh, but at the eight day point, that queen cell will be sealed up. At day eight, the queen cell will be sealed and she will be ready to, she'll be pupating in there like a caterpillar is when it forms a chrysalis. And the, uh, from that point onwards, the old queen is ready to swarm out with half the bees. And the issue with that is that's an uncontrollable uh, thing. So when she swarms out, she could quite easily just disappear. So I leave bait hives out to give myself a chance if I do make a mistake and miss it, but they could go anywhere. They could go and live in a tree somewhere. They could go, you know, they could go off to somebody else's bait hives. Once that swarm of bees has swarmed out, you have lost them in all likelihood. They are gone and they're living in a hole in a tree or in a wall, hole in a wall or some other beekeeper's hive and they're gone. You've got to just say goodbye to those. So when you catch them bringing on queen eggs, you do a controlled swarm, an artificial swarm. And so there's a few different ways to slice that, but my favored method is to take the queen out of the hive, put her in a new hive uh, with, usually I do a frame of brood. Now other beekeepers don't do that, um, but I'll put, give her a frame of brood for something to cling on to. Um, and then you take the hive that she's come out of and move that right away and put the queen with the new hive back in the location of the original hive. And the reason for that is then the flying bees, the bees that are out foraging on flowers and, and things, they come back and they reinforce her and that seems to establish the illusion for those bees that they have swarmed so that, that is usually it gets it out of their system for that season uh, and i've done quite a few of those this year and they've established pretty well if you don't want them to swarm you can go through and you can just destroy all of the queen eggs in process while they're while they're building but <laughs> that then they stay in what seems to be a swarmy mood and they come back the next week and they're bringing on more queen eggs um in general you need to intervene in some way sometimes you can do it by giving them a bit more space by putting more brood space in giving them more supers things like this um but i tend to just go with all right i will artificially swarm them it takes a hit on your honey production so both of those hives will then have quite a long period where they are rebuilding to make up for the losses and they don't make as much honey, but it is how one of the ways to, to grow your number of hives. And normally within about four weeks, they will have 
both got into quite a good position and be looking at bringing on honey again. As you'll see when I go through these, I pick just one of these hives is in danger of swarming. Now, the rest of them have all pretty much, either they're too small to re really be trying it, or I've already artificially swarmed them this year, and so it's out of their system, so it's a really, really low likelihood. So in, in a week like this, where the weather, and then we have the Isle of Wight Festival, which just makes traveling around the Isle of Wight a nightmare this weekend, so I have to prioritize, and so only one of these hives is actually got a reasonable chance of swarming, and so needs to be gone through to check for swarming. So, still angry, look at this. Grumpy little grumpies. Um, so, because we are late now, I'm outside, I looked at these last, I think about 10 days ago now, I have to prioritize. I have to prioritise what I'm doing, and so uh, not likely to swarm, they've only just swarmed. Not likely to swarm, they've only just swarmed. Not likely to swarm, they've only just swarmed. Bait, don't need to look. Bait, oh no, hold on. Split. So this was split um, nearly a month ago, only on two frames. Not likely to swarm, not going to spend my time. Bait, not going to swarm. Split, can't swarm. Queen's not mated yet. So the only one here at New uh, Carisbrook that I'll be inspecting today is this one because this one has not yet swarmed this year. They are on 10 frames of brood, so they're really rammed in here. And um, and last week they had quite a few queen cups that I had to remove, so they are kind of in the mood for swarming. So I will probably edit down what I'm going to do. I won't talk to you very much as I inspect here, but I'm going to leave the, the camera on to, to film this. It's probably going to eat my battery for anything else interesting the rest of the day. I'm going to leave the camera on to film as I do here. So what I will do, I'm going to, I'll pause. Um, I need to light the smoker and pick up all the tools because I rushed out the car to get to sort out all of the wreckage. Um, and uh, yeah, and uh, I will join you in a moment when we'll be Super, these two supers off and checking the brood box. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so All right, queen excluder off They're pretty calm, which is good And they've still got that bit of room. I meant to bring a dummy board So We check the queen excluder For the queen because this is how you get her on the wrong side if you don't do this. So, She's not there and then it's always just a good idea. Well, wow. do it afterwards then. Hmm. Thinking about footage, not me. Okay, so last time it was just this one didn't have brood on. Uh, I meant it when I say a dummy board just now, what I mean is there's a bit of wood that goes in there and takes up that bit of space. So once they've finished drawing out here, they'll put wild comb in here and you don't want that. That becomes a bit of a pain. That's only just beginning to draw out there. They'll they'll not finish that this week. So if I do only bring a dummy board next week, that's fine. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the camera because I realise I'm getting my bum in the shot. You don't come on YouTube to look at my bum. So okay, I can say I will probably be. We are looking for queen cells. So, here we've got brood. I'm not seeing any eggs, actually. No. Right then. Okay, so what I'm looking at here is they're sealed brood, but there are no eggs in there. I'm starting to develop a bit of a suspicion. And this isn't necessarily the panic button. So there's that nice sealed brood. But when we look down in the gaps, you would normally anticipate eggs and larva as well. And both sides of this are nothing but sealed brood. On a nice fresh frame like this, you would expect to have some of that, to have some eggs laid on that. We won't panic yet, but I'm starting to develop a suspicion. And if you're an experienced beekeeper and you've watched the whole of this video up till now, 
you may already be with me on what might have occurred here. Let us see. Right, off that. It's going to give them just a little bit of smoke to get them out of where I want to grip them. So do like to be kind. Some beekeepers don't think that smoke is kind. But I'm sparing. Okay, I have got a larva of middling age, and again, big empty gaps. Oh, there's some fresh laid eggs, I could be wrong. No, no, there's quite a good patch of fresh laid eggs. All right, now I've tried this before with the camera, and the camera just doesn't quite have what it takes. So I'm really gonna try for you. Oh, sorry, B. I'm just gonna steady the frame as well. So right down, in the bottom of these, you've got to look past the bees, are little white grains. And there's the queen, I've just spotted her up there. So she's not swarmed out. What I was talking about just now, oops. what I was talking about just now about the suspicion that I'd formed was that maybe I had missed the swarm out. So because I'm late, because I think it's been about 10 days since I was last here, they could have laid an egg the moment my back was turned 10 days ago, and we would have had that swarm two days ago, on day eight after that. So that could have been the queen from here in the little swarm I was doing and ahhing about just now there. But that isn't the case, so that's a bit of a relief, because I like this queen, and I'm trying to keep this hive big and strong so I can get some nice honey off of them. And if I split them down now, that's going to knock that back. Last year, this site was the worst one for honey. We had a terrible season last year where we were very reliant on wildflower, which this one is the one that is most reliant on wildflower. There's not much in the way of gardens within easy reach here. There's some, but not many. And um, so we barely had any Carisbrook honey. And it is one of our most popular. It's uh, quite a quite a populous area. People like honey from near where they live. Uh, and I was having to let down an awful lot of people saying, look, we've run out of Carisbrook. I'm sorry. Um, and so, you know, I want to keep this hive in particular big and strong so that we've got a reasonable chance. Lots more eggs. I'm not seeing any queen cups. So I'm probably going to just jump through all of the inspections here. So I'll probably be editing through this uh, a little bit because there is not much to see so far and we're getting through the middle of the brood nest here. No queen cups there. Now there's a little cup but not a well-developed egg. I'm sort of fairly laid back about cups. So. So the good thing about the bad weather is of course is it's got all the roots of the plants nice and wet. So you lose a bit temporarily because yeah, she's not laid many eggs, I think quite hard, Because they're not able to um, to get out and forage in it. Particularly this, the wind, they don't even like the wind. It's not just the rain. The strong winds make it harder for them to fly. And that makes means that even if they are flying, it's more calories to fly against that wind. Um, so, you know, this bit of bad weather has knocked us back a little bit. I think those supers, when I took them off, actually felt a bit lighter than I recall them being last week. Uh, so they've probably been eating honey even. So, you know, it's actually temporarily the last four days we've probably gone backwards. But the forecast is for the wind to drop in the next few days, which I'm fine about. Lovely patch of eggs again there. And then when the sun comes out and the photosynthesis happens on plants with plentiful water at their roots, you get a nice big bump in nectar. We had it the other week after a couple of days of rain. Oh, I remember. And, and so, you know, I'm not, I'm not panicking about that. I was panicking about hives being knocked over. 
but I'm not panicking about that. That's fine. Um, because yeah, they will they will bump. It sets us back a little bit for this short-term thing at the county show. I do need some honey. <laughs> Uh, and so yes, I will be videoing the honey extraction as well. Uh, so when that comes next week, you've got that to look forward to. You will see how honey comes out of honeycomb and into jars, but it might be I don't have much except St. Helens. So I've seen everything I need to see. There won't be, there won't be queen cells there. So I'm just gonna close up now. So yes, fair bit of rambling, quite a long video, but it's different content, isn't it? It's, uh, it's, it's not your standard inspection. Um, so those, those wind blown over hives, that's a bit of a nightmare, but it, it, is, it is interesting. It's funny how it changes my, uh, changes my appreciation that occasionally difficult things, I'm kind of, oh no, but it does make good footage for the YouTube channel. Um, I'm not courting it. I would much rather have a season where everything just goes totally easy, but um, these are the ups and downs. These are the ups and downs of it. Um, and sometimes, you know, you, you, can't, you can't afford to be sort of sitting down and getting miserable with stuff. It's got to get done. So I hope that that was interesting and informative. Um, I, and uh, if you found that to be interesting and informative, do hit the uh, like button. Do subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps us out. We're trying to do, do, do a lot with the channel. Um, give me feedback, honestly. I, so my ambition is for the channel to be really good. If there's more that you'd like to see, uh, I don't have the funds to invest in better camera equipment yet, but it will happen. Um, but, you know, do, do please keep on commenting. Any questions, any differences of opinion, you know? Um, I do not mind if you want to sort of challenge me on a couple of my practices. Uh, two beekeepers, three opinions is uh, the famous thing. So if you want to, if you want to sort of just ask me or just query it, it's always better to be polite in a, you know, in a world where happy days has been around, uh, around for, you know, near to 50 years now. Why not emulate the Fonz? Um, but yes, and just be cool <laughs> about stuff. But, you know, I, I don't mind a polite query about some of the ways that we do things. I am well aware that other beekeepers do different. Um, and, you know, share it, spread the word out. If you think that it's interesting, please do share it on your Facebook feeds and things like this. Tweet it. I don't understand Twitter, um, but it really helps us out. I, it's, um, it's, uh, we're, I really appreciate it. Every email I get that uh, tells me I've got a new subscriber, uh, Kate and I have a little happy dance. It's, 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 it's exciting times for us. So thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Take care.